Me being the uh, total idiot that I can be at times, I'm very book smart, very successful at school. I have a degree in math and physics, and uh, I couldn't figure out how to get these bead heads on, these slotted beads head, bead heads for any of these angled nymph or um, jig hooks, until I went to the great source of all things these days, YouTube. So, I had seen that there was a little hole in it like you would have for a normal bead, and I didn't think twice about trying to put it in that normal hole. I kept trying to take the slot and stick the slot in there, and nope, you do it just like you do a normal bead. Find the hole, put it in, slide it up, and sometimes it can be a little bit of a hitch to get it around to this point here, but there's a Align that slotted groove with the bend in the hook, and you should be able to pop it up there just fine. Okay, so now we start tying. And, um, oh, first step, lead tape. I, I put the lead tape on for a couple of different reasons. Um, one reason I put the lead tape on is because... I want to add a little bit of weight to the fly. The second reason I put the lead tape on is because I like to create a little bit of a broader profile. So I make sure it's not too long, which it's not. You want to leave everything from the hook point back to get stuck on the fish's mouth in their jaw. If you um, make the tape so that the tape goes past that hook point, the hook never really penetrates like it should and you can lose your fish. So. I like to slide this up just a little bit, a little bit more, there we go, nice, give me plenty of room there, and you can see what I'm talking about, here's the hook point down, and the tape does not go past the hook point, alright, now I have to move this, uh, or trim this tape, you're not going to leave it trapezoidal like that, so, my first step is to make a long cut, And then my second step is to make a shortcut. And trim that out right there. Okay. So three quick little cuts, and you have what you're looking for. All right. Attach thread. And in the course of attaching thread, um, I'm going to need to do a couple of different things. One of the things I'm going to need to do is put on um, a tail. Now, I want a tail that's going to shake and bake in the water a little bit, move in the water. Uh, as I mentioned before, I like inherent motion in a fly. So, I take the feather, and you can cut or you can pop. There I pop. I lay this feather right on top, putting the V right through where the bend of the hook is. This is very important if you're going to use a uh, upturned hook. And brush all those fibers to the back. I'm going to pop that off right there. And I want to make sure that I spread them out along the tape. I don't want to have them all coming from one point if I can avoid it. This way it creates a little bit better illusion of bulk. So I should have that as I look to that side. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, if you want to get these out of your way, and we're going to work with Solaris in a minute, which is a wet material, um, just so they don't like fall into the Solaris and everything else, wet your fingers a little bit. Put it on the marabou, and that'll get it out of the way for you so that it's not a pain in the butt. Okay, when you work with lead tape, you might have to constantly go back as I just did and reshape that body. All right, next I need a rib, and my rib is going to be silver wire, and this doesn't always work out as well as I want it to, but I'm going to try to make sure I pull it off this time. I'm going to also put on, with the silver wire, 
a couple of pieces of pearl glimmer and you can put crystal flash you can put um, any uh, you could even put like a pearl tinsel or mirage tinsel you want to put on something that's gonna that I'm going to twist around the er, come on guys be nice something I can twist around that silver wire and give it a, a little bit more pop a little bit more flash there we go all right okay next up is to wrap the body braid now the type of body braid I'm using, oh, by the way, I, I should have mentioned before, this is the Allen Jake hook, the uh, J200. This happens to be a size one. You use whatever size you want. I also use um, the Allen slotted beads. Uh, I just know that they're easy to get on the Internet. They're, in a, they're a local company, so I like to work with them. Okay. And now I've tied in my body braid. And... I always like whenever I tie in a body to go down and back, down and back. That way I don't leave any holidays, as my dad would call them. Okay. And he didn't mention holidays with respect to tying a fly. My dad couldn't tie a fly to save his life. He had no interest in fly fishing. He did, however, have strong interest in me waxing his car for him. So when I would wax the car, if I left a spot that I didn't get wax on, he would say, Hey, no holidays. My dad had a bunch of great expressions growing up. Expressions like, yo boy, how old are you? 15, you want to live to see 16? Or, yo boy, I took you into this world, I'll take you out. Yes, yes, yes. Back when children were raised just a wee bit differently than they are now. All right, so I now have my pearl braid body tied in, and I need to pause for just a minute, and what I need to do now is treat it with Solaris. So, uh, I'm going to work with the thick Solares first. Solares is a resin that uh, reacts with ultraviolet light. So I want to pop the Solares onto here. Bam! Hit it with a light. Sets it almost instantly, which makes tying much, much easier. Particularly for a pattern like this that has wiggly soft feathers all over the place. And the last thing you can do is get epoxy in those because it will completely wreck them. So now... Um, hitting it with the Solares. This is the thick mixture. I like to start with the thick. Oh, hold it. Almost blew it. No, I'm good. I'm good. I have my wire rib in there. Thought for a second I forgot to put the rib in. All right, so I just want to tease this onto there. I don't want to put too much at all. First off, it'll let you tie more flies. And second off, it's easier to manage, it sets quicker, and so on. All right. One of the great advantages to creating this prism body is that I'm making the uh, dorsal area, the, the part up here on the top, I'm making it much wider, which will be much uh, better for the purposes of securing the Matuka fibers, or feathers, for the Matuka style fly on there in a little bit. Again, uh, I'll emphasize this a lot. We're not tying flies to put in a shadow box right now. If we were, I would be very meticulous about what I'm doing, but I'm not. I want a fly that's going to pull some fish out of the water, have some fun, and last. And the requirements for such flies are a little different than they are for creating flies to go in shadow boxes. So... I hit it with the UV light. What this is doing right now is setting the Solaris so that it's just as set as if it was epoxy. Now, ultimately, the Solaris, like, I touch it now, and it's, like, almost perfectly dry. But if you touch it up with this stuff called bone dry, then it's, like, really perfectly dry. It's as if you had hit it with Sally Hansen's hard as nails for those who are used to working with epoxy. All right. Now comes what I would consider to be a bit of a tricky step. I had taken two feathers off a little while ago. Here, I found it. I 
I want to create a fly that has maximum motion. Anytime you have a marabou type of feather, and this is a whiting soft hackle chickaboo fiber right here. Um, it, it's as good as marabou, and what I like about it is it's, it's for smaller flies. Now, eventually I'm going to get rid of this piece in the middle here, and I might even trim these pieces down just a little bit, but I'm not going to do it yet. And the reason I'm not going to do it yet is because it'll help me handle the feather to have that extra length on there. So I get rid of a little bit of the fluff near the butt of the fiber. And what I'm going to do next is tie it in so that it's concave toward the body of the fly. And to the best that I can, given it's not a normal situation, well, sometimes I really like to fold these back and lock it into place beautifully, which is what I just did. Again, remember, I'm trying to tie a bulletproof fly. I'm not tying for a shadow box where a small head is critical. Um, I want to just try to fold this back as best I can. It's Look, it's a marable fiber. It's not as easy to fold back as, say, a, a hen neck fiber. But you can. Um, you know, hit it with your scissors a little bit. I do want all of those fibers on there. I, I don't want to take any of them off. Because it will give a little more of the illusion of bulk. And an, an ally for many of your white baits have a little bit of size to them. A little bit of depth to them. Okay. So I'll get to use those in a little bit. Now, from... The bigger, better bargain birds, the 4B birds put out by Whiting. I'm now going to uh, tie in my Matuka wing. And for that, I need four feathers. Two here. And they have a slight curve ah, so that they're in one direction. And then I'm going to choose from the other side of the neck and choose two feathers that curve slightly in the opposite direction. There we go. Hmm. And come on, pop it. There we go. Good. Okay. So, now what I want to do, I took off a little piece of the skin with these guys. What I want to do now is have these four fibers each turn in and face each other. There's actually five there. I missed one. Save that for a hackle. Okay. Line them up. So they bend two in one direction, two in the other, and then put them back to back. In my younger days, um, when money was a little bit tighter to come by, I used fly tying to pay for a kitchen, vinyl siding on my house, and I did them myself. Um, and a whole host of other home improvements. The salary paid the bills, the fly tying paid the home improvements. And what I was able to do was, I, well I tied, one of the patterns I tied, and I tied it for Orvis and Kittery Trading Post and many other well-known shops where they ordered hundreds of dozens at a time as a lefty's deceiver. So I was constantly putting feathers like this together. So for me it's pretty easy, but I've seen a lot of people struggle with it over the years. And all I can tell you is work on this area right here, pinching and holding. Don't go too nuts with the rest of the feathers and try to work them together. Okay? So, I'm, this is uh, something I don't usually do on a jig hook, but because I am on a jig hook, I'm going to work the butts on either side of the hook bend just like I did in with the marabou feather at the tail so that it works around the hook section there. All right. Okay. Now the last thing I need to do with these feathers facing each other, I need to find what point the body begins so I can pluck those fibers off, and that's what I'm doing right now. There we go. Make sure you take the feathers and slip them 
on either side of that hook that's coming up. Helps hide the hook. I don't know if that's really that big a deal to the fish, but um, it'll also help it swim better, and that's a big deal to the fish. Okay. I'm not going to fold these guys over. Two of the stems are a little bit of an attitude here. All right, so if you've never done Matuka fibers before, or feathers before, or tied a Matuka, what you're going to do is tease these fibers up, and, and you want to create an open area, a valley, if you will, that you can put the ribbing material through. Now, for my ribbing material, we said before, we would have um, a piece of crystal flash locked in around the silver wire, and then I'll twist, and what it does is that, that little kink gives it just a little bit extra sparkle. I'm not sure that the crystal flash will stay, in this case glimmer, but it gives it a little bit of a kick like crystal flash, so it adds a little bit of shimmer to that simple wire. Some people use uh, other materials to make ribs out of them. I'm, I'm partial to wire because it's more durable. If you notice, I looked down to make sure that wasn't spinning. Okay. Now you get out your bodkin. And I just want to work through here. Make sure I'm getting as many of these fibers not trapped down as possible. There we go. Hit my valley. Good. All right, so that takes care of the top piece. And when you start this off, you're in good shape. Now, next thing I'm going to do is work on the bottom piece. And this is definitely the trickier one. So, again, I'm going to re reassert the fold, pull it apart, there we go. Got a nice little bend there. It's trickier because we're not used to working on the bottom of a fly. Okay, slide it up a little bit. Once you have that anchor wrap in there, I think it does tend to become a little easier to work this through. Working it, working it, teasing it, literally teasing it through the fiber. So I, I try to trap as few as possible. Um, you don't have all day, particularly when you're making a video. <laughs> but um, you really do want to try to keep as many of these clear of the wire as possible. So you want to go through cleanly. Alright. I just keep teasing it open. And every time I do it, I'm creating a little bit of a valley, if you can see that. Okay. And there we go. And there we go go tie off okay let me just wrap that down a couple of times to make sure I got what I'm looking for here all right now uh, at this point in time I'm going to pause for a sec and I want to put another coat of Solaris on here but before I do that, I just want to make sure that any fibers that I trap down, I'm working out of the way so that they don't get in the way of that nice pearl braid body that I have here. It also 
helps lock everything in place. Usually I take four turns off. This time I only took three. Um, hopefully that's not a big deal. All right. I'll use the Solaris. Actually, I'm going to go with the thin this time. I like the thick for the eyeballs. I like the thick for the first coat. But I like the thin for the second coat. The outer coat of this one, because I just find it moves a little bit better into place where I want it. Yeah, when you work with Solaris, um, if you're working with the thick, you definitely need the bodkin to put it in place. If you're working with the thin, you may or may not need the bodkin to put it into place. That kind of depends. Okay. A little touch on your side here. I can see a little piece that I really could use to get out of the way. There it is. Yeah, your side of this actually came out better than mine, which is kind of weird because yours is the blind side. But we're good. I just want to make sure I get this in really, really, really good. Set it. I just recharged the battery quickly. The, ba the batteries on, on these Solaris units are fantastic and they hold really, really well. However, um, I let mine run down a little too far last time and the last one I was tying didn't harden as much as it usually does. All right, now I'm going to put eyeballs on this. Eyeballs are not necessary, but I am, uh, I've done a lot of saltwater fly fishing over the years. And for that, you constantly use streamers, and eyes help with those. I'm not as involved in freshwater streamer fishing, but I suspect that it's a comparable effect. I'm being a little bit careful here because I don't want to run it to have the thick run into where I'm going to be putting the hackle in just a couple of minutes. We're almost done with this fly, by the way. And it's almost like the uglier the better. Okay. The idea out of this fly is a general suggestion of the profile of a bait fish. And Action, action, action. This thing should move like Shania Twain in the Any Man of Mine video. That is to say, perfection. Just being cautious with the amount that I put on there. I don't mind a little extra. A little extra is a good thing. Almost makes like a hammerhead approach. Gives it a little bit of a wobble. Alright, so now I've secured my eyes, which really look cool, especially under a UV light. Um, I have a body that's set, and by the way, the extra time on the UV light, in case the Solaris on the body didn't set, will set it for sure. Alright, I've got mega motion built into this fly as you can see all right and now just a matter of putting on the hackle all right there we go Folding a hackle, this is much easier to see than with the other one. It's also in a better position to work with. Take your scissors, run it up and down the sides, just tick, 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 tick. You'll feel it, plain as day. Push them together and start wrapping. Make sure your thread's not in the way there. All right. 
it. Sometimes you will catch the uh, eyes with the thread if you didn't get it all the way around the, the bead and then the thread will fall off, or the eye will fall off I should say. If that happens just re-glue it. It's almost better to put them on after. As you can tell on my side the eyeball did fall off. I can't even see. Oh, there it is. very little Solaris on this eye so I have to put some more Solaris on it right now to set the fly up for good I'm actually going to use thin this time and hope that it gets in behind the eyeball a little bit better apparently I didn't do a good enough job with the Um, with the thick of working it in there so now we have the thin and that'll get in there real good okay it's looking good to me pull those Matuka fibers down and as I'm looking at this what I see is it's a little bit long here so you just come back in trim it out a little bit try not to cut marabou, your fingers work a little bit better it just looks cleaner when you're done more tapered I don't know if the fish makes a difference but I like to look a little bit better now what are the advantages to um, using the Solaris on this fly and combining it with the other materials first off the whiting soft uh, so a tackle chickaboo gives you tremendous action in the water on the bottom of the fly which really fills out and completes the profile um, the 4B hackles on the top make a great Matuka profile so altogether you've got a fantastic profile the braid underneath gives you some flash gives you some dash sometimes um, when you're fishing this fly the water spilling over the dam our wives are getting washed into the west branch of the Delaware and I'm sure it happens in other places too and what you see is if the water's muddy because there's been so much rain that it's pouring over the dam, then um, what you're able to get out of it is a little bit more visibility. Um, the hackle in front is going to breathe like crazy. I'll show you right here. You can see that it just creates a, a nice profile from the front and a lot of action and a lot of breath. Um, the eyeballs will give you... Um, a target for the fish it'll it'll suggest life a little bit better um, it's it's durable it's reinforced it'll breathe but with the lead tape underneath the jig hook and the eyeballs you're gonna be able to fish this really really deep and you will only hang up a fraction of the time that you would hang up if you were fishing uh, a, a regular hook where the hook bend down and the point of the hook could catch in the rocks better you could not only snag more which you would but you could also damage the point of the hook and then miss some fish so this is better for that purposes now sometimes when the owl wives spill over the top they're actually near the top of the surface and the fish will come up and hit them almost like a dry fly if that's the case you can just um, move this a little bit quicker fish it on a floating line and um, you don't necessarily have to fish it deep all right so there we go. Hope you enjoy and uh, play with and fish this particular pattern. Have a great day.